Good evening. My name is Reverend Peter Fast and welcome to our second of three lectures. Uh, tonight's uh, lecture is Israel's Military Challenges. And this is achieving military goals while maintaining code of ethics and humanity. And uh, we're, we welcome Colonel Amiram Yakira to tonight. And it is also my honor once again to uh, share tonight's presentation in partnership with Winnipeg Friends of Israel with uh, Yolanda Papini Pollock. And uh, before we uh, officially launch into tonight, I wanna give you br a brief explanation of how tonight will, uh, will uh, be presented to you. Amiram will give uh, uh, no doubt an amazing presentation tonight. And then following that, there will be a question and answer period. Okay, so we hope to devote a decent time for any of your questions to Colonel Yakira. Uh, if you look at the bottom, you'll see a question and answer um, uh, button toggle. You can click on that near at the end and you can then ask uh, your questions. And um, okay, and you can then ask your questions and I will moderate those questions and, and uh, pitch them to Amiram and we'll get through as many as we can. The second housekeeping issue that I'd like to just uh, clarify or make known to all of you is that all three, all three of these lectures last week's uh, was the normalizing uh, Jew hatred. We had Kasim Hafiz with Kufi, Christians United for uh, Israel. So he presented last week, Amiram presents this week, and then we have another presentation on June 24th. All three lectures are being recorded and will be edited. And then what we're going to do is release them all at the same time to anybody uh, that has registered, um, whether you've been on these calls, all three of them or not, you will get the chance to then review them. So we will make sure that you get them. So as I mentioned, my name is Reverend Peter Fast and I am the National Director of Bridges for Peace Canada. I wanna just share a little bit about Bridges for Peace for those of you who uh, may be hearing about Bridges for Peace for the first time or didn't attend last week's lecture. Bridges for Peace, we are Christians supporting Israel and building relationships between Christians and Jews in Israel and around the world. So we have kind of two sides of the same coin. On one side, we work towards reaching out to the church, um, educating the church, resourcing uh, the Christian community, in this, the country of Canada, but we're also in eight different nations around the world and internationally located in Jerusalem where our headquarters uh, is located. We connect with the Christian community to educate and resource them on the importance of Israel. This is on multiple different levels, both in the, the Bible throughout uh, post-biblical history and into, right into the modern state of Israel. And so we have um, an incredible donor network and we're a volunteer driven organization as well. So in Israel, which is what all of our programs are there to, uh, to support the needy of Israel. And you will see in a moment here, a quick video, but our, our, our volunteers and post uh, pre COVID, uh, they number between 60 and 70 Christian volunteers from about 15 different countries around the world. And they go to Israel for short-term, long-term volunteer opportunities to do and support our incredible programs there. So uh, that's on the one hand of us reaching out into the Christian church to understand the, the roots of our faith, which are Hebraic um, in nature and the, the foundation of our Christian faith, but also to bring Christians and Jews together in unconditional love and respect and bringing our communities together. So on the other side of that coin, we exist to support um, the Jewish community in our nations, as I mentioned, we stand uh, with the Jewish community in solidarity. Uh, um, we stand against uh, all forms of anti-Semitism, but also our work in Israel, which is incredible work that we do. 
We're feeding over 22,000 needy Israelis um, every month, distributing about 60 tons of food. We work in schools with hundreds of children. We support proudly the Israeli Medical Corps, Magan Davida Dome, which is like the Red Cross uh, Ambulance Medical Service of Israel. We do home repairs. We have helped over 85,000 Jewish people make Aliyah, move to Israel, um, which is an amazing thing. And once they're in Israel, if they um, have needs, because many of them coming from the former Soviet Union or other uh, nations and even coming out of poverty, uh, many of them need continued support. And so we are privileged to do that. And so we'll take on hundreds of families per month for a year sponsorship. So it really is the joy and pleasure of my life to, uh, to devote my, uh, my time and my career and my energy and my passion to standing with the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, uh, standing with the Jewish community in the diaspora. And uh, it is just such a pleasure to welcome Amiram tonight and to once again partner with Yolanda. So I invite you right now to just sit back and watch the short video before Yolanda then uh, introduces herself. Bridges for Peace, Christians supporting Israel and building relationships between Christians and Jews in Israel and around the world. Bridges for Peace, 50 years of blessing Israel and the church through compassion and revelation. Compassion, feeding Israel's hungry, caring for Israel's needy, repairing homes, giving hope to children in poverty, helping the Jewish people return to their ancient homeland. Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Revelation, bringing the Bible to life in its ancient context, revealing the truth of Israel's prophetic significance, telling the story of Israel's miraculous rebirth, connecting Christians and the Jewish people through a grassroots global team of Christian representatives. For God's instruction shall go forth from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Bridges for Peace, a Matthew 25 ministry dedicated to supporting the nation of Israel and bridging the centuries-old gap between Christians and Jews. Bridges for Peace, your Israel connection. Hi everyone, thank you Peter for, um, for uh, telling us all about Bridges for Peace. Uh, it, I don't think we can find uh, a more um, Zionist organization. Um, I'd like to just say a few words about Winnipeg Friends of Israel and I will be short. Uh, Winnipeg Friends of Israel is a grassroots organization. It was established in 2014 during Operation Protective Edge, when a group of activists felt a need to di disseminate Israel's narrative because of biased media. We felt that the media as a whole presented, presented an unfair, out of context, and very partial reports about Israel. And we wanted to do something to change it. As the years evolved, we have managed to help change perceptions about Israel by organizing rallies, reaching out to other communities, but especially through education. If, uh, if we thought that we made strides during the years, Operation Guardians of the Walls proved to us that our work is even more important and needed in 2021. We are very proud to stand with Israel and will continue to do our part to fight anti-Israel, anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism where and when we can. Uh, if you are on Facebook, please remember to click like on our page so you will be able to see our posts and share our posts uh, with your friends and relatives so they can see them as well. Um, I'd like to, um, to talk a little bit about the talk that we're going to hear tonight and you will have uh, an opportunity to ask your questions. Uh, Colonel Richard Kemp called Israel the most humane ar army in the world. And as a British soldier himself, he knew what he was talking about. 
war is a messy, it's bloody, and it can bring out the worst in humanity. War and humanity are oxymorons, but sometimes a mean of surviving. Uh, just like Israel has to protect it, herself, uh, unfortunately, every few years from uh, rocket attacks from, from uh, Hamas. The IDF is taking extreme measures to protect innocent lives when fighting in populated areas. No army in the world has used these techniques and methods before. We asked Colonel Amira Yakira, who's uh, um, the Israel Defense Attaché to Canada, to tell us more about these measures and how they compromise Israeli military goals. Colonel Yakira was born in, on a kibbutz in order in Israel. He joined the, um, the Israel Defense Forces in 1994 and began his 27 year career in the military as an operational pilot in Israel Air Force. Along the years, he flew many types of air mobility air aircrafts and commanded over various uh, squads. He required he acquired staff experience in Israeli Air Force's headquarters and was promoted to com uh, command Wing 15 and Air Force, ba uh, an Air Force uh, base at uh, Sdedo. He also served as an instructor at the Israeli National Defense College. Uh, he's married and he has three children and he has been the Israeli Defense Attaché to Canada since 2020. We are very honored to have you with us today, uh, Colonel Yakira, and uh, we look forward to hear everything that you have to say. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you very much, uh, Yolanda, and thank you very much uh, to uh, Reverend Peter Fast. Uh, and to everybody, I would like to, uh, to thank you for inviting me and to thank you for the, your support. Uh, to Israel through all, uh, the, for all the years and uh, especially in the, the past uh, Operation Gardens of the World. I would like to, um, to share the, my presentation. So we will, we will talk less about the uh, background, um, about Israeli society and politics. Uh, as a as a uniform uh, as an officer in uniform, uh, I, I am well aware that uh, that uh, officers should be politically aware, but not politically involved. You can ask question about uh, about that, but uh, my answer will be uh, in, in this spirit. We will focus on uh, the guardians of the wall over UN context, Israeli Israel military goals, military challenge, especially. Uh, those evolved from the asymmetric warfare, morals and ethics during warfare, and uh, the Hamas use of uh, misinformation and fake news. Before we start, with, uh, I would like to present a short overview uh, about what, what was happened in, the, in last May. Uh, the, the tension arose in, uh, in uh, May uh, 10th especially about uh, uh, riots uh, in Jerusalem and uh, around the Temple Mount in East, uh, East uh, Jerusalem. Uh, the Hamas uh, threatened to uh, fire rockets uh, toward Israel and uh, the Hamas narrative uh, was to, that, uh, to create a bond between Jerusalem and, uh, and the Hamas in Gaza. So the Hamas and the Palestinian Israel, Islamic Jihad should have fired missiles toward uh, Jerusalem and its surroundings, Ashkelon, and, uh, and the, the Gaza envelope. And after a response of the IDF, uh, the Israel Defense Force, and by, especially by the Air Force, um, shot uh, many uh, missiles uh, for 10 days, more than uh, 4,400 missiles uh, towards uh, the, the cities uh, in Israel. The IDF responds with precision strike uh, on terror targets uh, in the Gaza Strip. At, at the end, more than uh, 1,600 uh, Iron Dome interceptions and uh, 13 Israeli uh, uh, kills and uh, more than 130 Israeli civilian injured. It's very important, important to understand the context. I can, uh, I can uh, answer more questions about that later, 
But the context that we, do we see the Iranian involvement uh, in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and also in Gaza. We see that the Iran is assisting uh, the terror organization forced to build up by supplying funds, technical know-how, training, and means. While the Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad uncompromising armed struggle against Israel, military destruction of Israel, th those are the goals, and rejection of the two-state solution, and establishment of the sovereign Islamic states on the ruins of Israel. Those, those are the goals of those two uh, terror organizations. Israel was under fire for more than 11 days, although Israel is sometimes looks uh, as, the, as the Goliath in, the, in this campaign, it's very important to understand that for 11 days, there were, uh, there were indiscriminate uh, shooting on Israeli cities. Uh, for, for those uh, examples in, in Petr Tikva, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Tel Aviv, as they wrote many, many, many cities and villages uh, uh, in, the, in Israel. I would like to show you uh, just, uh, just at the beginning and then we'll speak about it a little bit later. Uh, about the Iron Dome, uh, almost science fiction. No! Uh, in the middle of the night in, the, in uh, the center of Israel, Tel Aviv and its uh, surroundings. So what were the military goals of this uh, operation? First of all, in the Middle East, there is no unconditional surrender. Like uh, World War II, those, uh, those pictures present uh, Nazi Germany and uh, the Japan uh, signing the, uh, the unconditional surrender on the uh, USS uh, Missouri on the shore of uh, Japan. In the Middle East, there is no unconditional surrender. There is no uh, possibility for white flag uh, being uh, for the, from the Hamas or, or from uh, for many other uh, enemies. This is the, the complexity. Even, even our, uh, let's say, most glorious war, if there is some, such a thing as, as glorious war at all, but most, uh, let's say, unpredicted victory uh, on the Six Day War 54 years ago. Two, two pictures, uh, one of them is the, obviously uh, known as the, the parachuters in the, in, the, in, in the Western Wall, and, and the other one is, the, is uh, Yossi Ben Hanan, uh, for, for days Major General Yossi Ben Hanan in, in the uh, in the water of the Suez Canal. So the public is looking for the picture, the picture of victory, but it's very important to understand that there is no picture of a victory in, in those kind of campaigns of, of today's war. Uh, the goals are limited, uh, limited goals, determined by the, uh, by the, uh, the leaders, the civilian leader, the government of, uh, of Israel. So what were, the, what were the goals? The goals were to bring an end to the imminent threat to the Israeli civilians and reestablish security. And to do it by weaken and deter Hamas, by eliminate, eliminating strategic assets and tactical capabilities. The Iron Dome, although it's a, it's a defensive system uh, being uh, planned and uh, produced uh, and, and, uh, in order to, to intercept um, missiles, rockets, uh, including a different type of, uh, of aerial threat, gives us the chance to, uh, to slow the, although we, we would like to, we don't like long wars, we don't like war campaigns because the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the civilians is under fire, but still, gives us uh, the time to do the, the strike very precisely and with patience. This is the, the, the most important things of the, of the Iron Dome. What you can see in the picture, obviously from, from the left side, the, un, the undiscriminated, indiscriminated shooting of the Hamas and from, uh, from the entire uh, Israel 
they are simultaneously uh, defending and intercepting by the by various launchers of the Iron Dome. The IDF target bank, I, I would not like to enter each one of them, but just to say that all of them are military targets. All of them are just justified according to the uh, international law, uh, governments and security institutions that are used uh, to support terror activities, uh, senior commanders, operational terror forces, and uh, military infrastructures. IDF strike uh, on the Hamas, what, what we call the Metro Tunnel. Uh, I, do, I don't like uh, this uh, name. Obviously, it's a slang. It's not a metro. There is no train over there. It's just uh, uh, hundreds of kilometers of, uh, of uh, underground uh, city uh, used especially uh, for, uh, to support the, the Hamas uh, capabilities, including what you can see on the left side, uh, the, uh, the, the launchers, the, uh, the missiles, and, and many other, uh, many other uh, terror uh, capabilities. It had been struck very precisely by the Israeli Air Force. And sometimes you can see that, uh, like in those uh, pictures, you can see that the, 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 the whole street was collapsing inside those uh, tunnels. So those tunnels are uh, related directly to the threat on Israeli civilians. UNRWA, uh, the United Nations uh, uh, Organization for, for Support of the, of the Relief and the Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees, although we have uh, many, many, uh, let's say, uh, they are, on, they are um, a lot of, um, Israel critics, critics about uh, the way that UNRWA support the Palestinians and the fact that, uh, that, they, uh, that they are harboring uh, uh, in, in their own facilities, uh, the, the Hamas is uh, building the is, uh, infrastructures. And in here you can see a few examples of the, of the UNRWA condemnation, the Hamas of using uh, its uh, schools. Hamas used uh, his people as human shields, and, uh, shooting from uh, from inside the uh, civilians' uh, population the area. For example. start to understand the, the challenge of uh, what does it mean to, uh, to strike and to eliminate this, this threat when it's uh, been uh, established exactly in the middle of a civilian uh, populated area. I want to speak about the, the Hamas, uh, uh, about the Al Jala building. Al Jala building was a terror, uh, terror infrastructure that also uh, harbored the, uh, the Al Jazeera and the, the Associated Press uh, facilities. But it was used by the Hamas uh, military intelligence, research and development unit, and electronic uh, warfare, especially uh, now, now it's already been published that, uh, that one of the, uh, one of them uh, system that was uh, um, uh, prepared by the Hamas over there, uh, used to be uh, or planned to be uh, to arm the Iron Dome. So imagine yourself uh, what what impact could it be uh, towards uh, the Israeli defense if that could have uh, could have been employed uh, in the campaign. Uh, the IDF stroked uh, this building on May 15th, not before evacuate all the people from the building. There was no casualty, no one casualty in those uh, in those uh, building uh, uh, strikes, 
And uh, now uh, after the campaign ended in the June 7th, uh, you, you can see the, the ambassador Erdan, the ambassador, the Israeli ambassador to United States and the UN uh, went to, uh, to, um, to speak to the president of uh, Associated Press and to report about exactly what was in those uh, buildings. So Israel uh, tried to, to compensate between the, the fact that we need to, to arm and to uh, eliminate the, the terror organization uh, units and, and the fact that those units are inside uh, populated the area. But Israel still committed to the freedom of press and, uh, and the, the freedom of, uh, of uh, and, and the safety of uh, all the journalists. So the moral and ethics during warfare, I would argue that the moral and ethics conduct during warfare is the core of the military profession. This is what is being taught uh, by, the, uh, by the commanders, by the leaders, to, to, uh, to all the uh, soldiers, officers in the IDF, and definitely in the Air Force from the very first uh, beginning of their career. The question is how to balance the, mi the mission to defend our own citizens and the need to minimize harm to non-combatant civilians on the other side. And it is run case by case, every strike. Is it a ticking bomb? Which means, can we come later or we have to strike now? Because if we don't strike it now, it's like a ticking bomb that could uh, blow and, and kill Israeli civilians. How is it, uh, how time sensitive is it? It's take years of experience and unique methods have been developed uh, for, that, for this uh, kind of uh, warfare. Every loss of life is is a tragedy and I can assure you that no mistakes are ignored. All of them are being investigated, very harsh and based for learning and self-improvement. How do we mitigate harm to non-combatants? First of all, uh, we, uh, uh, we do uh, the, the method that uh, has been called knock on the roof. Knock on the roof, first of all, it's to, uh, to, to uh, give a phone calls to all the, all the people that live in the, in, in the same building or in the same targets. I, I will show you an example of uh, such a conversation. after making these uh, phone calls hundreds of phone calls uh, and they get the time more than one hour to evacuate the building then the the small Small shooting on the on the it's a warning shooting. Uh, being that's what you can see. It's a very small, uh, very small munition. Senator Jaya, just to Senator verify Jaya. that there, uh, if someone was uh, in case someone was in the building, that he has the uh, time to uh, to go out. Then this is the reason that you always see those uh, very good uh, and very stable uh, films of those buildings being hit because they have time to uh, to set up those uh, cameras. All the all the uh, journalists has time to set up the cameras from uh, from very far. At the end, sometimes sometimes the uh, the, the strike is being aborted, being aborted. Uh, because there are civilians or being delayed because there are civilians in the surroundings of the of the target. I would like to show you a movie uh, of, uh, of such a such a, a strike being uh, being aborted and being delayed. And after that, you can see uh, that uh, 
the, the strike, you can see the missiles near the, uh, the, 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 um, the civilians' uh, houses. אנחנו חוזרים לרחוב הראשי כדי לראות באמת את התנועות לכיוון הצומת שביקשת. מעולה. רגע, הנה רגע, זה חשוב. שנייה, יש תנועות מהבתים שצמודים, כרגע מהנמוך, זה שממש צמוד למטלב. אנחנו רואים פינוי, אוקיי? אנשים רצים אחוז מהנחלים. מישהו רץ לקרוא להם, אנחנו רואים כבר שניים לפחות רצו החוצה יחד איתו. יש, היה פינוי עכשיו של אנשים, זהו. יש מטלר למטה, אני רואה את המטלר מברד, נמצא פה, רואים שתי שורות כאלה. אז האם שם פיצוצי משנה רציניים, נכון דבר? נכון מאוד. זה רק מראה, ממחיש את הנזק האדיר שהדברים האלה עושים. The Israeli uh, EIDF uh, capabilities of uh, very precise uh, shooting in, in various means allows us to, uh, to use, uh, to allows us a careful use of power. And there is no need uh, to, to take down a building. Uh, there is no appetite for that. Uh, so sometimes there, if, there, if the terror uh, infrastructure is concentrated just in one uh, floor, Uh, this is a picture of, uh, in, a, in a film of uh, such a kind of uh, strike. <laughs> the, ver the very stable, the very stable uh, picture and film is also a, a demonstration of how, uh, how people uh, knew that uh, this strike uh, should come because they were warned about that. So what does it mean? How do we create careful use of power? First of all, the targets, uh, the target choosing and approval is a very, very systematic uh, process uh, based on intelligence and research uh, and many, many uh, details that need to be planned. What is the surrounding of the, of the targets? Uh, if it's in a populated area, um, what is the population habits? If it's schools, is that those schools are uh, at, uh, occupied at, uh, at the day, but what happened in the night? Uh, is it uh, the hour sensitive? What is the, uh, the, uh, the best way uh, to strike at the best direction? We use the smallest necessary damage to achieve uh, the impact we, we need. If it's a room, if it's just in one room, no need to, to take uh, out all the floor. If it's just one floor, uh, we can save the building. And this determines the method of the munition that being chosen. How accurate can we be? And, and what if and what if a bomb uh, hits uh, uh, to, to, to the other building uh, nearby? So this is the calculation and the risk that need to be uh, to be taken care of. I can I can tell you that there are legal consultants during the approval of every pre-planned targets to see that uh, all the targets, all the strike, the strikes are according to the international law. At the end, in the Israeli Air Force, the leader, which means the, the commander of the aircraft, has the full authority to abort, even if it's uh, just a lieutenant or a captain, and not necessarily a colonel uh, like myself or brigadier general. If you, th if you think you're in the air and you think that uh, a non-combatant could be uh, uh, injured, it's your authority and you have the full authority to abort uh, the strike. Uh, at the end, the, the careful process is time consuming because every strike need to be, uh, to be watched with uh, intelligence and surveillance uh, system. And it's take time. This is uh, another, uh, another uh, film 
uh, represent how strikes is being uh, canceled because of uh, of uh, civilian nearby. נכון, יש פה אחד גדול וכמה קטנים. אנחנו חושדים בילדים ואנחנו לא נלך על... לא נלך על גם לחשב שהם ילדים. כן. לא כי יש פה ילדים. יש פה ילדים. זזים מהר, זה לא... One of the uh, one of the things that uh, one of the challenges uh, that we have to deal with uh, in this kind of unsymmetric warfare is the the challenge of the the lies and the misinformation of the Hamas. One of them is the Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad misfire. Misfire is the is those rockets that fail to cross into Israeli territory and instead explode within the Gaza Strip, causing damage and causing Palestinian uh, casualties. Uh, you can see uh, in this movie, for example, it's a misfire of, uh, of a rocket. In the blue, in the blue places uh, and the blue uh, point in the, in the Gaza, you can see uh, the, all the misfires that uh, for 11 days, it's been determined by the very sophisticated uh, Iron Dome radar. That can see exactly where those uh, those uh, rockets uh, are, are uh, hit. Another another challenge is the fake misinformation and the fake and the fake news. Hamas is engaged uh, in a global uh, cognitive campaign against Israel, trying to portray Israel as an inhuman aggressor. As part of this effort, Hamas is encouraging. Uh, in, encouraging this, uh, uh, the distributions of lie, lies, uh, misinformation, and fake news. Uh, mainly in the social media, you can see just three examples, but there are dozens more of uh, pictures being uh, collected from many other uh, campaigns and being used uh, once more like, uh, like, uh, uh, like original, but they're not. One of the lies that uh, the Hamas uh, uh, put is, the, is the, uh, the fact that there was a humanitarian uh, crisis in Gaza in this, uh, in this uh, uh, campaign. Well, actually, there wasn't. Uh, while, when, when the support was entered in the Kerem Shalom uh, pass to, uh, to the Gaza Strip, the Hamas targets the international aid uh, convoy. Uh, this is the uh, an interview has been conducted with uh, with the head of the the UNRWA in Gaza. He's not known as pro-Israel. Uh, many years we have a lot of uh, criticize about uh, his role in the in Gaza, uh, but he uh, said the truth that there was no uh, there was no political uh, uh, there was no uh, humanitarian uh, crisis uh, in uh, in Gaza. And, uh, and he was kicked out uh, and, and uh, declared as a persona no grant. This is the uh, this is the this is the Noir, the, the head of the of the Hamas in Gaza. Uh, after the after the the end of the of the campaign, uh, to show you what what is their um, uh, treatment uh, with uh, with their own kids. Those are the, the words uh, by the, the IDF uh, chief of the general staff, Lieutenant General Aviv Kohavi, basically to say that we need to remember who, who are we fighting with, against. So to sum up, the military, the military had limited military goals. There is no uh, victory. There is no white flag at the end of that. And uh, 
and the, the solution to, to the Palestinian Israeli conflict is a political uh, solution. It's not, a, it's not a military. Uh, the asymmetric warfare challenges, we discussed about that. The IDF acts in accordance with the international law and is making immense effort to avoid arm, arming non-combatants while defending Israeli civilians. While Hamas is firing missiles from and to densely populated area, uses their own people as a human shields and committed double war crime. Moral and ethics during warfare are the core of the military profession and Hamas's misinformation and fake news uh, versus the IDF commitment to the truth. This is what we were talking about and I would like to accept any question. Thank you. Thank you, Amiram. Thank you, that was excellent and um, very informative. We do have some questions and I will read them out in the order that they've come um, and you can give your answers. So the first question was is from Phil and he says, next time, how can Israel finish off Hamas before the world pressures for ceasefire, allowing Hamas to reload Iranian rockets? I, I wish uh, I wish I had a good uh, a good answer for that. I can assure you that the the, the IDF is now uh, make a debrief debrief and uh, investigate investigation of all the campaigns and uh, what learn the lessons learned in order to to make the next campaign as shorter as possible. And we are fighting uh, obviously uh, the the fight is also because they need to be short because Israeli civilians are under fire but also because we have limited international uh, support and, uh, and uh, let's say credit. Uh, the patient in the, in, in, the, in the, especially in the Western world, there is no so, uh, so much patient for, uh, uh, for any kind of uh, violence. And uh, the excuse of the fact that there are uh, Israeli civilians under fire, it's uh, sometimes uh, not, uh, not good excuse for, uh, for, the, for some of the, of, this, of, of the Western world, especially. So, Right. Um, another question as, uh, from Ed, he asks two questions. Uh, the first one relates to Hezbollah. He says, Hezbollah has many, many more rockets, more powerful rockets and more dangerous rockets than Hamas. And Hezbollah has placed the rockets among civilians. Given the much greater threat to Israel, it won't have time to do rooftop taps or text messages warning people to leave as it did in Gaza. Israel bashers will cry war crimes, crimes against humanity and violation of international law. Should Israel be doing more to prepare the world regarding Hezbollah's human shield strategy? Yes, the, uh, th 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 thanks for, Ed, for asking this question and to, uh, to remind me to, uh, to speak a little bit about Hezbollah. You're 100% right. Hezbollah has 10 times uh, the, 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 the amount of missiles and the threat uh, than, than Hamas. And then in the campaign in Lebanon, uh, I hope there is no one, but uh, should occur, will be much more violent to both sides, but especially to Lebanon than in Gaza. It, there is no time for roof, uh, for, uh, roof knocking and uh, warning. Uh, it, it will be, it, it will be uh, um, let's say, the violence and the destruction that uh, Lebanon as a sovereign state will, uh, uh, will suffer because uh, it, uh, harboring Hezbollah is expected to be immense. Uh, no time for, uh, for, uh, for a slow, uh, slow campaign. It's, uh, we know that uh, uh, many, many, many uh, civilians uh, in, in southern Lebanon and all around Lebanon harboring rockets and those rockets will be attacked without warning. Not to be uh, to think that uh, one can copy the campaign from uh, from uh, Gaza to uh, to southern Lebanon. Uh, every uh, we we, do, we uh, do every diplomatic preparation to uh, to convince that every uh, the, every shooting from Lebanon is uh, is an is an attack from Lebanon towards Israel, and the, the Lebanon uh, government should be uh, should be held accountable for that. Mm. Um, Ed's follow-up question says, it has been said that Israel cannot destroy Hamas 
but only weaken it because destroying Hamas would mean Israel has to go in and rule Gaza, which it does not want to do. Would you say that th that is an accurate description of the situation? Yes, this is, this is pretty much accurate. Militarily, you, uh, the, the Israeli military, the IDF can conquer Gaza very fast. And then to clean it, uh, it will take a few months. It's, it's not uh, to, go, to go door by door, it will take a few months. Uh, obviously, uh, many casualties, many international uh, uh, uprisings, but can be done militarily. It's, it's very important to, to understand that military, does, this kind can be done. But then what next? Then you have to stay there. Because the minute you go out, uh, those uh, terror, terror organizations come, come once more. We don't want uh, to be in Gaza. We, we left Gaza in 2005. Uh, we don't like what we got there, uh, what, what, uh, but, uh, but, but this, is the, this is what I meant uh, when, I, when I meant that uh, it, those are limited uh, goals. Uh, those are limited operation goals until there is a political solution. This is unfortunately every, every few years uh, we'll come up with uh, on another round. The military goal is to postpone the next war uh, as far as we can. Okay. Uh, Colonel Yakuria, there's another question. So uh, Sonora asks, can you explain how the Iron Dome works? <laughs> uh, yeah. So first of all, the, 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 this, uh, ex this is one of the, one of the secret, uh, let's say the, the Iron Dome is maybe the, 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 the jewel in the crown of the, of the Israeli industry. And it's, a, it's very technologically, it's a, it's a miracle. So I cannot explain, I, I don't know, uh, but I can tell you that it's very, uh, very precise and uh, not, not every missile is, is being intercepted because those that uh, are being anticipated to fall in open area are not being, uh, are not being uh, intercepted. The missiles that are being intercepted are just those who are uh, who supposed to hit uh, were detected as, as like supposed to eat as uh, civilian areas or or uh, strategic uh, infrastructures, uh, but it's very very precise and uh, accurate uh, system. Okay, another question uh, from Rosalie. Now I'm I'm, I'm assuming that she's um, her question comes from those fake news images that you showed of um, the horrific images of children that had died or been injured in other conflicts and then being used as propaganda tools uh, and relabeled as, oh, this has happened in Gaza. She says, how come these images don't get shared with mainstream media or do they? Oh, I, I, I wish, I, I, I would, I, I don't know, but I, I mean, I don't know, especially uh, this, uh, I don't know, especially on, uh, to answer on this free uh, picture that has been presented. Okay, uh, I'm, I I can share you that that Israel tried to uh, um, to launch the campaign exactly of the of, explana of the explanation asbara in Hebrew it's called asbara, uh, which is and it's sometimes because we are committed to the truth, so we are not in this in, we are not running fast enough. I mean, where, 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 where an horrible picture is being present and you don't know where it, where it came from because it's from, from Yemen or from, from Iraq 10 years ago. I mean, it's already, it's already in the news. Now, now you start to, to dig and to, to look for the truth. And, and, and five days later or four days later, you find the, 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 the truth while, while the damage has been created already. So this is a challenge. Uh, I, I hope that next time we'll do it better but uh, it's, it's a very uh, difficult challenge to, to win the, uh, uh, the Western, the, 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 the media, uh, social and, the, and, media and, and, and the public media. Yeah, and the social media, right? Somebody releases a picture like Definitely. that so, and it takes so you five days. That could be th hundreds of thousands of shares by then. Imagine yourself that those, those journalists that I told, I told that, uh, we are uh, committed to the truth and commit to, to, uh, to the security of those journalists. And, and the, those journalists are committed as well 
for, for the truth and for integrity. But in the social media, it's like a microphone to, to, to uh, hundreds of thousands of people that are not to, to any truth. Uh, they can publish whatever they want. And this is, this is exactly, a, those, those are the asymmetric, one of the asymmetric challenges that we had in this uh, warfare. Um, another question, John asks how, and this is a good question, how is it that over 4,000 rockets can be smuggled into Gaza with the embargo and security at borders in place? Okay, so, so we, 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 here is very important things to, to clarify. Most of those rockets are being produ uh, product, uh, produced in Gaza. Years ago, years ago, uh, there were tunnels between Gaza and Egypt, and many rockets, heavy rockets, have been smug, smugged through the Sinai from uh, from Iran to Yemen, from Sudan to the Sinai, and then and then smuggled uh, in tunnels to to Gaza. Uh, so so some of the rockets are, are originally being produced in Iran and then smuggled, but now. Uh, out of, uh, the, the large portion of the of the equipment of the of the rockets is being produced uh, in Gaza itself and in the underground uh, city, uh, and they use the uh, the pipelines for the uh, you know the, what what Israel used as uh, water pipelines to the settlements until 2005. They they cut the steel and then prepared the, those rockets from those pipelines and the fuel the fuel. For those rockets, is 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 the materials that being used uh, uh, in agriculture, uh, many kinds of minerals. So how can you uh, you, you cannot f uh, limit the the the, the salt or or, uh, or different kind of salt enter Gaza? Uh, this this is a challenge. Instead of using the money and the, the agriculture to to grow uh, to, to make the desert bloom. They 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 uh, put it into into rockets, and instead of uh, using the cement to to build uh, hospitals uh, and, uh, and 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 building of, uh, for for good infrastructures, they're using the cement for building the the tunnels. So uh, yeah. this, this is about it. Um, Bernie asks, and this is all this is all I have something I've always speculated about. Uh, so Bernie asks. When the IDF phones people, how do you know who's home and that you've reached everyone in a building? So, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's say that we, we, are, uh, we have the intelligence to know, uh, it's, it's not a secret that, uh, that the cellular that can be detected, that you know, uh, that you know where the cellulars are, and uh, and like said before, if if someone is without his cellular and he's asleep, then you get the small missiles to warn him, uh, which would say that we are not uh, counting only on the phone calls, right? There is a small munition that uh, doesn't do any harm, but a lot of noise before uh, before the building is the is, uh, is being hit by live by live munition. Okay. Uh, Br Brad says, should Israel be at a security risk if there is a swing left in the political spectrum in the US and the US no longer funds Iron Dome? Uh, <laughs> this is a, yeah, it's a, it's a question that, uh, that borders with the political issue that I didn't want to enter, but <laughs> I would say that uh, uh, that the Iron Dome is, uh, is, is, is crucial to Israel's security. Uh, we value much uh, the support of, uh, of the U.S. government, and uh, we have no, uh, no, no better ally than, than, than the U.S. Or, and Canada as well. Uh, but, uh, and, but, but obviously, uh, if, if some kind of the political uh, change come up, it's, it's going to be a, a big challenge, a big okay. challenge for, uh, for Israel. Um, Myron asks, what were the Hamas casualties? How many died in the destruction of the tunnels? Uh, so 
We don't know yet all of these, uh, with the, the accurate number are being verified. According to the health uh, department uh, organization in, in, in the Palestinian Authority, some 250 uh, people died. We know that at least uh, half of them are, are Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad uh, terrorists. There are pretty much half of them are uh, considered to be civilian or non-combatant. Uh, this is this is the numbers, and there are, let's say that uh, people that uh, that were involved, but we, we are not sure yet what was the what was the type of the involvement. For example, if we know that there are there are, because of the intelligence, we know that in one apartment there are five uh, five uh, terrorists, and we hit that apartment, and 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 we understand later on that there were seven, two of them. We didn't know exactly who, who they are. Now we understand that they are involved. There is no chance that they are involved, then they are not involved. But uh, this is the gray, the gray, the gray area that, uh, that need to be clarified uh, and, and it will be clarified eventually. Okay, I think we have time for two more quick uh, questions. Um, uh, the Biden administration wants to send resources to rebuild Gaza can the military prevent these resources from going toward Hamas military infrastructure? No, it's not going to be the military. It's not going to be the military, the Israeli military, that that will prevent the use of of, of the of the international aid uh, from being used as the uh, uh, to, to support uh, to, to support the terror. That that's exactly is the challenge. In order to prevent it, you, you need you need to be you need to be there. Uh, yeah. While we are not there, the, the, there are no Israeli soldiers in, in Gaza Strip, uh, so uh, th there is going to be a different mechanism of, of to, to make those assurance uh, of how not to to to, uh, to deliver the support uh, for the Hamas and deliver the support to the Palestinian uh, uh, society. Okay, uh, uh, short answer if you can here, Colonel. Uh, from Sonora, did the Israeli army achieve its goals in this war? Uh, one one goal that, uh, that you can say immediately that has been achieved is that we took many tactic capabilities for the Hamas. The other goal, uh, which relate to the uh, peace Peace and security so far, a few days after, there, it's, it has been achieved. And deterrence, whether Hamas is being deterred or not, it needs to be examined a few years from now. Uh, so you, you cannot say that it's being, and, de and deterrence is something that you can say that it's, it, it, there is or not, only when it's break. We'll see. Okay. Well, thank you, Colonel. Uh, Amiram, uh, thank you so much for your presentation. The questions were streaming in. I had a few prepared myself, and I think Yolanda did too, just in case we had to kind of get things going. But I think five minutes into your presentation, there were questions popping up already. So an excellent response from everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, Colonel Yakira, as well, for uh, lecturing and presenting, answering these questions. Uh, we are concerned with Israel. We love Israel. And, um, and the first line of defense is the IDF. And so to get the picture of what's happening straight from you as well is such a valuable thing because it's very difficult when you try to put the picture together as you've hinted at with CNN or Reuters or social media. And so to hear from the military attache uh, to Canada from Israel is just a, a treat. And I just thank you. Um, Yolanda, do you have a few words you would like to also add? Yeah, sure. I, I would like to thank you for this brilliant um, presentation. I think uh, things are a lot uh, more clear and I saw that people had more questions. Maybe I, I will be able to send them to you later on. And if you have time, you could answer and I can send the answer to some of the people that did not get uh, the answer. <laughs> Um, I want to thank you again for your service and for, you know, we are not, uh, uh, we know that without the Israeli army, there is no Israel. 
And we want to thank you for your service and for everything that, that you did. And of course, for coming to speak to us. And I also want to thank my friends in Zev and Minda in uh, Ottawa that made that uh, connection with you. Thank you. And um, yeah, that, that's about it. And I just want to remind everyone that we have an event on the 20th. It's a Sunday, the, 9th, the, tw uh, the 20th of, uh, of June, and it's Bridges for Peace chose not to uh, get involved with it. But if you want to, uh, to register, I can send you a link. We're going to uh, have a conversation with Emily Rose. She is the Middle East correspondent to, of I-24 in Israel. Uh, she's a former Winnipegger and a great uh, person to ask questions about uh, Operation Guardian of the Walls and what she saw and what her opinions are. So uh, we hope you can join us on the 20th for another um, presentation. And then um, uh, one more event that Bridges for Peace is part of with uh, Winnipeg Friends of Israel is going to be on June 24th at 7 p.m. It's uh, called Exposing Media Prejudice Against Israel. And we're going to have uh, presenter Mike Fiegelman with honest reporting. And so we highly recommend everyone to attend that one as well. And that will complete these three um, uh, lectures. So thank you once again, Colonel Yakira. Thank you, Yolanda. Thank you. It's, a, once, thank you. it's a blessing. And uh, have a good night and shalom, everyone. Shalom. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.